Little earthquake out in LA this morning. Luckily for us, Chandler has no furniture. Run it back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Well, run it well, up, well. Good, happy back. Wednesday yeah, morning. Yeah. I'm checking in with Chandler first out on the West Coast. All good after the shakes? Very good. It was 2 a.m. though. That thing was rocking last night. That's when they like to get you. They like to wake you up and as if you were not awake. But anywho, we're going to introduce uh, everybody else. Sean Sharania, our stadium insider, always with the good news. And I know you've got some stuff for us later on. And Eddie on the end, looking glorious as always on this fine Wednesday morning, sir. Well done. Well done. Um, are you ready? Are you ready for the Battle of L.A.? It's not so much a battle, is it, really? But it, it is what it is. Uh, Kawhi and PG, 52 combined points, 10, 18 rebounds. They beat the Lakers. I mean, this is the 10th straight win for the Clippers over the Lakers. So, Chandler, what did you learn about the Clippers last night? Well, it's not really a battle anymore, and it hasn't been for a long time. Uh, You know what? You learned that I think the Clippers are one of the deeper teams in the West, probably the NBA, uh, and they're actual contenders when they have these two guys, Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, playing at this level. And this is why they had the high expectations coming in. They have such a deep team. They have such a versatile team with so many interchangeable pieces. They have youth. They have experience. They have shooting. They have playmaking. This is one of the teams where when they do hit their stride and they have Kawhi and PG playing at the level they are, you know, going 11 for 16 and 11 for 20. And these guys kind of dominating, taking turns. Uh, this is one of the better teams in, in the league and, and definitely in the Western conference is so wide open this year um, that if, if these guys can fully get healthy, get John wall, get Luke Kennard, get all their pieces back together and get some reps and chemistry development going into the stretch, you know, the last stretch into the playoffs, this team is dangerous and, and they showed you why last night. And obviously they they're, they're played the Lakers who aren't great. But this just shows you how they can defend and they're tough and they're switching pick and rolls. And, and it's, it's an impressive team to watch when, when they're clicking like this and when they're healthy. Nice stat. Yeah. Nice stat. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'll never forgive the Clippers for not handling their end of the bargain and, and meeting the Lakers in the playoffs in the bubble and, and, and finally <laughs> getting that matchup we were waiting for. But it, it's, been a, it's been a wash ever since then. It, it's been a wipeout. And uh, what did we learn about the Clippers yesterday? Not much. We pretty much saw the team we assumed they would be at the beginning of the season if we could get Kawhi on the court, if we get PG on the court, if, if they could remain healthy, if they could, you know, get some rhythm going. And, and that's what they look like. Uh, you know, they're a defensive force. The Lakers are a really great matchup for them as well without a guard who can really attack off the dribble and shoot and and. And so they end up taking care of business. They look like exactly what they're supposed to look like. But believe you me, the the Clippers will never own Los Angeles. There's a reason why they're getting their own arena out the way and they're doing all that because it's still a Lakers town. And and it's not just because they had the Lakers stuff on the floor yesterday. It's still their town. And the Lakers are the reason why this is the A block story one and not the Clippers because, (gasps) of course, it's the Lakers. Like, Beetle loves it. I do love it. I do love it. This is 10 in, 10 in a row, guys. Come on. Shobs. <laughs> yeah, I, I think what's interesting right now is just how this Clippers roster is developing, right? Like, they finally have Kawhi Leonard and Paul George back in the lineup, but John Wall is out. Reggie Jackson is, is playing some somewhat, uh, um, you know, not as, as big of a role as he has in the past, somewhat limited minutes than his role even last year. What we're seeing now is Terrence Mann. He's been the guy that's been starting at point guard. This is not something that this team or anyone around the league expected going into the season. But he's really grabbed that that role by the horns. Um, and I think he's played at a, at a good level. Him and Paul George can kind of take turns bringing the ball up and, and game managing and getting guys and setting the table. Um, so just seeing how this roster has developed. Guys have had to fill different roles that were not expected going into the year. We'll see how active they are in the trade market to go get an actual point guard. But I think they're, they're kind of confident in Terrence Mann leading that position. So I, I'm curious about how this roster has developed and will develop over the next couple of weeks. It is crazy how much of a tease this team is night in, night out when you don't know which version you're getting and then you see it all together and you're like, oh, this this would actually be fun to watch every night. On the other side of things, however, LeBron James. LeBron James did a lot. He did about as much as he could. He had 46. Um, of course, it was in a loss, but he comes the first player in NBA history to score 40 points against every single team. He was also pretty frustrated there at the end of this one. 
you know, energy wise, he's got to muster it up every single night. Um, and, and it ends up in a loss. So Chandler, how frustrating is this? It's very frustrating, but at this point of the season, he, he's got to understand and know what this team is. You know, they're just trying to scrap and battle and get into that play in. And, and he's gunning for that record. And you can just tell this dude is healthy. He is motivated. He is on a mission. I wouldn't be surprised if I, I you know, after he gets the record, he, he, he takes a few games off or he takes a dip and all these crazy stats averaging 35 the last couple, like five or 10 games. He He's... 46, 8, and 7. He was 9 for 14 from 3 last night with zero turnovers. Like, I would be looking like that, too, after a loss like this. And then just feel like in the fourth when they made that push and he had the two dunks and the momentum was shifting. Every time they did, you know, the Clippers kind of came up with a big play or a big stop or a big shot. And, you know, Russ had a bad turnover during that stretch. Or LeBron would hoist a 30-foot three, just kind of playing hero ball. Like, it just – they didn't have enough and they don't have enough. And, you know, you know, hopefully Rui kind of comes in and gets in that burst, but this is extremely frustrating for LeBron. But it's it's nothing new. It's, this is this is who they, their team is. This is he's been having. If they were winning more, he's my yeah. MVP with what he's doing with with his age, like his stats. He yeah. is he is unbelievable. And I know there's a lot of other guys, but you, you let them get in the top five, top four of the West. He's my MVP. Well, hell, yeah, I think Chandler so. nailed it. Yeah. Like, Chandler I, nailed it. They, they need more. I, I, if, if you got your bingo card, if you got your drinking game going, I'm going to just say it. He has no help. He has no help yeah. with this Lakers team. He needs Anthony Davis back. They're talking about possibly coming back today, if not Friday. And, and he's right, right there on the cusp. But 46 points, and he hits nine threes, and you're not even close in the game. Your coach pulls everybody with, like, five minutes to go. That's embarrassing. I'm actually shocked he didn't stick around to get the 50 ball because why not at mm. that point? But th there was a few turnovers late in that game and, and you could just see it. LeBron always wears his emotions on his sleeve. It's it's no surprise to see him, I guess, like pouting over there on the sideline. But I don't blame him. He's got to be pissed. He's got to hate this right now. But going back to what we've been saying for some time, I know Laker fans love to blame Rob Palinka. They love to blame Jeannie Buss. But it's pretty widely understood that when they pushed to get Russell Westbrook, he was right there pushing with them. And, uh, you know, yes, pout and be upset. And, yes, he has no help. But take a little bit of accountability as well. It's, it's, it's kind of his fault he has no help. It's like it Eddie's reminder. Though. I love it. We should put it at the bottom. Reminder. <laughs> By the way, he's, he's 187 points away. So the odds on which game that's going to happen. Woo, moving on up. He's going for it. Maybe that's it. Maybe J.J. Redick was right. Let's just watch for the record break, and that's it. It's a moral victory. Um, Kyle Kuzma, not just a fashion icon, but also doing things on the court. 30-piece, leading his team over the Mavs by one. <coughs> Chandler. Bradley Beal had 22. All right, so, Shams, Washington cleared the decks, right? To give him that extension. Um, he gives them 30. Uh -huh. What would the market be, or what will the market be for Kuzma this summer? When we, when we spoke about Kyle Kuzma a few weeks ago, several weeks ago, really early in the year, we were saying, and I reported around 25 years what a lot of team executives believed. But it's like with each passing game, it's like his value continues to go up. And, and I know Kyle Kuzma's a very, very confident guy. So he's probably looking at close to 30 like a, as a goal per year in a, in a new deal. So when you're, when you're thinking, where's that money going to come from? Uh, teams with, with cap space, we'll see. But Atlanta and Phoenix have had interest. But I, I don't really see a realistic route for the Wizards to move Kyle Kuzma. I think they'd be open if someone really blew their doors open. If someone offered like two or three first round picks for a pending free agent, you have to think about that. But they just moved Rui Hachimura. And I think the dual impact of that is that it took the Lakers out of the ball game for Kuzma because then they're going to want to re-sign their own guy, Rui Hachimura, that eats into their cap space. And for the Wizards, one less competitor and a, an easier pathway to retaining Kyle Kuzma. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, this is a guy that with every passing game, I think he's only increasing his value, uh, you know, as every, every single game goes on. I mean, that's all you can do, Chandler. If, you, if you're in charge, what are you doing with Kuz? I, mean, I think they did it yesterday with, with trading Rui. I think they had a chance there to kind of pay Rui not as much as kind of a younger player with, you know, not as – 
good of a resume and a good of a season that Kuz is having, or they, they trade Rui and they overpay Kyle Kuzma this summer, which looks like what's going to happen. And Kuz deserves it. Look, he's, he's averaging 22 points, eight rebounds, four assists. He can do it all. He can bring the ball up the floor. He can facilitate. He can knock down shots. He still takes some pretty bad shots and is inefficient. And I'd like to see his, pers- his field goal percentage and three-point percentage kind of get better, which I think that naturally will as he takes better shots and kind of gets more comfortable with his, his spots on the floor. But he's played very, very well, you know, this season. And he deserves to get a big contract. And he's going to get over $100 million. And, and it looks like it's going to be in D.C. Yeah, I think in a vacuum, Kuzma's great. He's developed – Way beyond, I think, what even the greatest expectations of him when he was drafted by the Lakers. And, yes, he absolutely deserves the bag. He played great last night, 30 points. He hit the game-winning free throw. He missed one, but he did hit the game-winning free throw. And the, and the Wizards were clearly relying on him. My concern with them is, yo, you have this big three. You're locked into Brad Bill. You're going to lock into Kyle Kuzma, apparently. You're figuring out what you're going to do with Chris Stapps Porzingis right now. But you're still not even a play on playoff team. You're still not even a mm. play-in team. Even with all their injuries and all that, Brad looked fine yesterday. He had some great shots. Put a hell of a move on Luka with a behind-the-back snatch and a, and a jumper he hit on him. But, like, do you really want to lock in long-term with that trio? And you're already not getting results now. And those contracts, how are they going to age? How is that going to age for you as a franchise? It's, it's a tough decision, but it seems like they're making it, at least with Kuzma, so that makes me wonder, hey, what are we doing with Kristaps Porzingis now? He's had a great season as well. Modern stretch five type big, and he's continuing to develop. He's been better than he was in Dallas. What do you do with him? Is he available, or is somebody going to come in and swoop him and overpay him this summer? A uh, hmm. lot of interesting stuff with them going forward, but I get buying in on Kuzma. I mean, he seems to be the best of the three this season. Uh, I just don't know I'm buying in on that nucleus going forward as a whole. Yeah, that's that's the pickle that they're in, right? Like they have these assets and these guys can all play individually. These are all really good players. They're not a championship contending team. I don't care what you add to that team unless you add another star. It doesn't matter what the role players, the vets, the draft picks like that core three going forward. I just don't know if it's a championship contending three and and how could i like i just said they're not even a play-in team right now in the eastern conference so it is that's a tough situation for leonsis and the wizards like they're going to put all this money into guys that are not winning right now you kind of know what these three guys are too it's not like they have a crazy ceiling either to get much better so this is who they are and to give them all this money you got to pay somebody and and they deserve it because individually they're playing well but i I just i don't I don't see the future with this team. They're not they're not better than a lot of teams in the Eastern Conference. What's the updated status check? Is Kyle Kuzma all-star potential player, Chandler? We need the status check right now. I mean, <laughs> no, you're not going to get into an all-star game as an 11 seed. You have the season that you're having now on a top six, top seven team. For sure. If you're averaging 22, 23, you're somewhat efficient. You deserve to be in an all-star game. But... I think a lot of it goes into rewarding winning and the Wizards aren't winning. It's crazy because these three guys are constantly part of all trade speculation talks. And now here we are sitting going, are they going to keep them? All? It doesn't, none of it makes sense to me, but it was a very frustrating loss on the other side of things for the Mavs. Spencer Dinwiddie, basically not happy about it at all. Put it into words. Well, I mean, we just got to be better in that respect. Yeah. I mean, like they're, they not playing for nothing for real. You know what I mean? Like, they just coming out here firing. Like, they got people coming off the bench just firing, right? Because at the end of the day, for them, it's a showcase. They over there trying to get paid. They're not trying to play winning basketball. I mean, and Kuz heard it and responded, and I love it. Clown emoji is the best. Eddie, was any of that necessary? <laughs> I mean, look, Kyle Kuzma saying that as a former teammate of Spencer Dinwiddie, he played with him last year, and it did not go well for Spencer (laughs) Dinwiddie in Washington. It didn't end well for Spencer Dinwiddie in Brooklyn. So, you know, I don't, I get him trying to be a leader, I think, with this quote and and calling out the other team, but you lost to those that team not playing winning basketball. You lost to that team trying to showcase themselves, and like Kyle Kuzma said. Your style of basketball isn't exactly winning basketball either. 
I mean, that was interesting. I like Kuz with the clapback. I'll always enjoy a good Twitter clapback. And uh, he deserved it for that one. But the, the way they ended this game and, you know, they have these clips now of teams knowing exactly what the Mavericks are going to do on this play. And <laughs> even Luca's right. like yelling at the bench in one of the clips, telling them, yo, they know the play. They have no timeouts to fix it. Uh, their late game execution has been awful. And, and part of it is because of actually what Spencer Dinwiddie is complaining about. It's not necessarily a winning play here. We get the ball, Luca coughing corner, and then he, he goes left and just turns it over. Like, this has happened multiple times. We've had the debate on here, like, should he pass, should he shoot? He's tried both, and they failed both ways. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Spencer Dinwiddie needs to uh, look inward, I think, uh, with the way that game ended. It, like, that's the thing. I feel like these endings to these Mavs game, you sometimes are just like, is this deja vu? It feels like an ugly ending again. Luca had 41, 15, and 6, so that's that's not the point. But you saw the final possession. It was a hot, hot mess. Didn't work either time. Luca misses a clutch free throw there in the final minute. Um, this this is the problem, right? Luca is great. We get it. But what is this team doing, Chandler? How frustrated do you think Luca is right now? Yeah, it's frustrating and as good of a season he is you know he's got to take some ownership here he's got to be able to get guys more involved he's got to get these guys going and but yeah like watching this side out of bounds play clearly the wizards knew it was coming and they just run the same play again um their end of the game is horrible they kind of go to this iso and and there's just a there's a recipe here where end of the game just double team luca and kind of scramble around and fly around and make one of these other guys beat you uh but but this is tough and last night they even got help dwight powell had 22 points spencer had 20 josh green had 16 so he actually did get help last night it's just they don't defend they don't rebound and they don't kind of have that go-to second guy especially with christian wood out uh, so it's tough and it's frustrating. We talk about it all season long. Let's get this guy another another star. Let's get him help. And it's clearly not that easy because it, it's or else they would do it. Like Mark knows, Nico <laughs> knows. They know what we know. And they're watching the same game. So listen, I think Luca's talent and this roster is going to get you to the playoffs and it's going to maybe even get you a series. But, you know, for them to take that big step, they need someone else. They need help. They need size. Um, and like I said all along, they, they miss Jalen Brunson more than any team misses anybody else this season. Oh, yeah. Look, that's, they, they could absolutely use a secondary ball handler who can break down defenses late in games, uh, a guy who can hit big shots, a guy who could average 22 points a game, six assists, and shoot 40% from three. And just like Chandler just said, that guy is actually Jalen Brunson. He's doing exactly that in New York. And they won last night, by the way and have a better record than the Mavericks. So, yeah, they, they do need some help. They had some help. They made their decision, and now they're, they're living with it. Spencer Dinwiddie, if he could match Jalen Brunson's production, they would look much better right now. He is not matching Jalen Brunson's production. So, uh, they got a lot of stuff going on, and, and they're just as flawed as Chandler says. And, and, yeah, maybe they get a series, but maybe they're the seventh seed, and they have, to play the, uh, they have to play the Nuggets or the Grizzlies, and they don't get a game. Like, they're, that's their potential right now. They could be either or. Yeah, they're absolutely unpredictable as far as what can happen with them. Uh, the first game of the night, the seesaw game of the night, was Heat Celtics down in Miami. Bam! With a night, 30 points. Miami wins, 98-95. Afterwards, Bam made his case to play in Salt Lake. Why not, right? If you don't love yourself, who will, Chandler? Is he an all-star? Yeah, I think he's a lock. I think he, the, the the value he has there, the games he's having, the seasons he's having, the way he defends and protects the paint, uh, and they are the hottest team right now in the NBA and, and they lock up, they defend, they're tough. They force a lot of turnovers and Bam is a huge catalyst on that defensive end, the way he protects the paint, the way he rebounds, uh, the way he flies around and scrambles and he's scoring the ball. He's scoring the ball efficiently. Um, and again, they've kind of had their ups and downs this, this year where, you know, we were questioning them earlier, but it's kind of like the Warriors, like we were questioning them, but we don't worry about them because they have that DNA, they have the culture. Uh, and last night to, to beat this Boston team without Jimmy Butler, and I know they were banged up as well. This is a huge win and they've been extremely hot, hot, hot team right now. And this is a team that's tough and they're gritty and they're deep. And I don't want to see this team in the playoffs. I'll tell you that. Yeah, 21 and 10, six seed. He's the best player on the team. He's absolutely an all-star. He's one of the best bigs in the league. And, you know, I think of somebody like Bam when I read that Rudy Gobert quote about, oh, the GMs understand me even if the fans don't. Bam is that guy. Like, he, he's an absolute defensive anchor. He's 
they've rode that into the finals before. They rode that late into the playoffs last year as well. Um, he, he had a rough October to start the season and has been great ever since. He's been the best player on that team by far and, and, and helped them stay afloat as they've dealt with all their injuries like the Miami Heat seem to every year. But he, he's been great. He's continuing to develop his offensive game. I talked to a couple people from the Heat this summer, and it was like, we just need him to be more aggressive on offense. We just need him to grab the ball and feel like he's that guy. We get him wanting to be a team player, but sometimes we need him to be an individual. Looks like he's got the message this year, and he looks great. He, he, he better be in Utah. He deserves it. Yeah, for this, for this Heat team to be a bona fide playoff team with all the injuries to Jimmy Butler, to Tyler Hero, on and on, uh, it's Bam Adebayo, 22-10-3 averages this season, career year for him. He should definitely be an all-star. Uh, and to me, you're, you're seeing kind of the turning of the guard in, in Miami. You're seeing Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero get more of an increased uh, pressure burden on a night-to-night -night basis. Jimmy Butler has missed extended time at different points. Kyle Lowry has also missed time this year. So this is definitely a changing of the garden. On the Celtics side, no Marcus Smart again. You know, I kind of hinted at it yesterday that he's, he's probably going to take his time. And uh, he said he's going to be out at least one to two weeks. I think this is going to be a week-to-week -week thing right up until the All-Star break. So uh, kind of a tough loss for the Celtics. But Marcus Smart has to pay attention to his body as well. Well, I mean, look, it was a tough loss, but it was only a three-point loss. Not here for moral victories, of course, but the Celtics, as you mentioned, no Smart, no Brown, no Brogdon. I mean, I, you know, it doesn't seem like end of days as far as losses go, right, Chandler? Celtics still where they need to be. No, they're, they're, this is this is a tough loss. It's a game that they should have won. Uh, Jason Tatum's got to take care of the ball better. He had seven turnovers last night and a huge one down the stretch there on the cross-court pass. Um, listen, this isn't a team that's going to worry. This is a team that has a great body of work. This is a team that's deep. And, and they were extremely banged up last night. They were missing four of their top eight guys. Um, and, and this is a tough one just because they feel like they had this game and they should have won. But this is one you flush it, you watch film, you get better. But this is a team that they could see in the playoffs. So this, this one's going to, you know, they're not going to forget this one, but this is definitely one that they're going to wish they had back and that they know they could have won even as shorthanded as they were. Um, but, yeah, I, I'd like to see Tatum, you know, just take care of the ball a little bit better, especially in crunch time. Look, this game also ugly, gave ugly us turnover, Stan Van like. Gundy. Like, right? Like, it was kind of a – it was a weird ending. Also, the people watching in Miami, chef's kiss. There was cleavage everywhere, male and female. Stan Van Gundy dropped a bus in, in a sentence. So, yeah, it was, it was a fun game to watch on a random Tuesday night. Uh, moving on, Pacers. I love – there's a quote coming, and I love it so much. But first, they erased that 21-point halftime deficit. They beat Chicago. Benedict Mathurin, Miles Turner with 26 apiece. But this quote from Rick Carlisle, a lot of rookies are hitting a wall and losing steam at this point. He, being Mathurin, actually gaining momentum, and that's the most impressive thing about him. Eddie, does he or should he be getting a little more rookie of the year love? Right now, he's second favorite on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Yeah, I, I think he should, and he's coming on strong, just just like his coach said. And, you know, he's been great. He's been great from the outset. And it's tough for him because he's got Paolo Banchero over there looking like the rookie of the year, just being great all season long as well. But, uh, you know, we, we, we question Rick Carlisle bringing him off the bench and what he's doing there, but it's a role he's thrived in. And, and he's continued to bring him off the bench, even with Tyrese Halliburton out. And as this team starts to win more games, whenever they get Reese back and then they, they continue, continue to climb up their standings, they're clumped up right now in that playing group. Um, I, I think the noise will get a little bit louder. He, he looks great. He's, he's an absolute athlete. He's shooting the ball better than I thought he would. He's fearless. He's driving on any and every defender you put in front of him. And, and uh, he's, he's fun to watch. And that team is good. That team is better than their record. They dealt with some injuries as of late. Uh, but, but they're continuing to trudge along. And I, I think they'll be in the playoffs when, it, when, when that comes around. Hmm. Yeah, if, if, if Paolo didn't exist, the, the, <laughs> the, the trophy is his. And as big of a leap as it is from him to Paolo, you know, Jaden Ivey, Walker Kessler, these guys have no chance. It's a two-man show, and it's really a one-man show. And they've both had great, great years. Obviously, the Orlando Magic have not won a lot of games unless they play the Celtics. Uh, <laughs> he's had a great year. Um, but Benedict Mathern, he's, they got to be stoked. They got an absolute stud with this kid. And again, if it's not that he doesn't deserve it. It's just there happens to be one other guy that's having an unbelievable rookie season that's doing a little bit more on a worse team than him. So you got to take that with a grain of salt as well. But yeah, I like this kid. I like what, what, what Carlisle is doing with him off the bench. 
kind of him being the guy early on in his career, getting all the reps, you know, facilitating the offense, being that score. But this kid's not coming off the bench for long. He's a bona fide star and a starter. Yeah, it's kind of hard to complain about the start to his NBA career. We're going to take a quick break here. But next up, Shams with the latest on Kevin Durant's return. All of that when Run It Back comes back. Run it back, yeah. Run it all. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Welcome back to Run It Back. And there it is. Great news for the Pelicans with the return of one Brandon Ingram. This is a triple scoop from Shams uh, on this fine morning. So, yeah, talk to us. What what determined this? What can we look forward to, Shams? B.I. set to return. And this is like very, very perfect timing. They've lost 10 of 13 games. They've lost five in a row. So this is a Pelicans team that's been without Brandon Ingram for the last two months. They've been without Zion Williamson for the last several weeks. He's going to miss two more weeks. Uh, Zion Williamson is and so we'll see if he's even going to be healthy enough uh, for for you know closer to all-star break Uh, but right now Brandon Ingram unless there's a setback he will make his return tonight Uh, he was listed doubtful yesterday uh, but he's set to return tonight against Minnesota I mean I was starting to think that toe just fell off Chandler it had been so long what does this team look like now with the return of B.I.? Oh, it means everything. This this is their best player. This is their go-to score. And as exciting and as electric Zion is and, and what he does for that team, this is their guy. And he's going to have the ball in his hands in crunch time. He's their best scorer. He can score in so many different ways. So this is huge. And this is a team that, you know, we were high on early on. They're so exciting. There's so much talent with him and Zion and CJ and all these young guys that defend. And this was the up-and-coming team. And, and they've done solid, I guess, except – as of late, losing the 10 of 13, but they're still right there in the fourth seed, but they're in danger zone here. They could easily drop just as quick as they can stay there. And this is, this is like Sean just said, this is perfect timing to get their best player back. Now they need to get Zion back. They need to get fully healthy. And I fully expect this team to be that same exciting team and, and make noise if they can continue to get and stay healthy. Yeah, this is big. I felt like this was taking forever. Um, Kevin Durant. I know the team's kind of figuring their stuff out now, but, when can we expect him back, Shams? So, so Durant said yesterday he wants to play in the All-Star game. Uh, so he would have to come back before the All-Star break at some point and then be able to play in the game. So there's been optimism that he's going to be healthy enough to return before the All-Star break, play in the All-Star game. But this is a Nets organization that's historically been cautious. So we'll see how this process unfolds. Uh, but this is, this is a guy that has yet to play an All-Star game as a Brooklyn Net. He has not played an All-Star game since 2019 because of injuries. Uh, that game he won MVP in. So it, he's yet to be in an All-Star game as, as a Net. That's a crazy stat to think about. And this is a Nets team that's below 500 without him in the lineup. Uh, their point differential is 114 with him in the lineup, 107 without him. And it's just going to be a bigger burden for Kyrie Irving at least here for the next two uh, weeks or so. I love the idea of him being back to playing the All-Star game. Eddie, does that mean you get to go to Salt Lake? How's this work? Hey, man, I don't know. Maybe we'll do running back from Salt Lake. Yes! Uh, it, 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 I'm thinking about it. I'm considering. And, and yeah, like, like Sam said, uh, Kevin wants to play in that game. He's been optimistic through the entire process. I mean, I think the main thing for him and for the team is – uh, it wasn't as serious as the similar injury last year. And so that gave him an air of confidence. But they're going to make sure he's 100%. Kevin's going to make sure he's 100%. And uh, he's, he's trudging along. You know, I, th- I know he got spotted at the Drake show. He was walking around kind of briskly. Yeah. Uh, and he's just now starting to get back on the court for his work with that. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. I hope he can go. I hope he can play. And I hope he's the captain because – they took our uh, they took our thing about picking the team. So, uh, but uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see. He hasn't played Shout in three years, Sarah's. which is kind of right, which, which is kind of crazy to say he hasn't played in that game in three years, and uh, yeah. I know he wants to play in it. So we'll see how it goes. It is crazy that he hasn't played, Chandler. Uh, first of all, I saw your face when I said we're going to Salt Lake, but. Um, <laughs> Well, I've, never heard, I've never heard someone say you get to go to Salt Lake. <laughs> well, I'm going. It's because I don't have the choice. Uh, but yeah, listen. Obviously, it's, it's the the season for the Nets is much more important than All Star Weekend and the events. And as, as much as he wants to be a part of that, he's got to make sure his body and everything is intact. And listen, they have a chance to contend here and win a championship. So. If his knee is fine, he can get a few games in before. Yeah, I don't know if someone's ever just played in the All-Star game with 
first without playing a game before. That would be awesome if he just that if he used the All Star game as kind of like his warm up. Yes. Coming back to the uh, but yeah, listen, it's fun, and he's missed it, you know, often now. And this is, you know, you, we want Kevin Durant in the All Star game. He's exciting. He's fun to watch. So obviously, I think his health and their season comes first. But yeah, that'd be cool to see him play. Um, speaking of All Star, this this was a bit of news. The NBA All Star Draft will take place live right before the game. So it's basically like like playground rules. Like I I love this. And then I wondered, man, does this provide any sort of logistical problems or issues, Shams? Like are people excited about this format? Because as a fan, I am. Well, yeah, I, mean, I love we it. Know, we know we know Eddie and KD are excited. So uh, you know, they <laughs> yeah. the NBA kind of took their idea one year later. Um listen, I, I think I think it's unique. I think it's cool. The fact that the NBPA signed off on this uh it wasn't just a league thing this is something that the nbpa had to agree to so clearly there was enough uh, unification within the players and in the executive board of the nbpa uh, I, I think it's a dope idea i think it's cool like it would be interesting to see what would happen if it's like two captains with ernie johnson then you have all the players uh. just lined up together it would be kind of awkward for like the last guy picked True. Um, but you know <laughs> I, 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 hey. I think i think it'll be it'll be it'll be fun I'll, 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 I'll let the Rudy Gobert jokes up to Eddie, though. Yeah, I'm go ahead, go Eddie. Eddie. Yeah, I've, never wanted, here, Eddie. <laughs> I've never wanted Rudy Gobert to be an all-star more. Like, I, I hope he makes the team and he's sitting there and, they're, they're, you know, Kevin and LeBron are groveling over who has to pick him. Uh, I, I oh. love it. And like you guys mentioned, Kevin just spitballed this idea on the et cetera last year. Similar situation. He was out with an injury. He was talking about the all-star game. And he was like, yeah, we should just pick him right there on the court uh oh, run the bag please like let's 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 get our points on the package there but i love it uh i hope that somebody is rightfully pissed off about getting picked late and, yes. and tries to shoot the ball all game um it's perfect this is what it should have been from the beginning and and i i can't wait this is like my favorite part of the game now i'm excited right yeah. like does uh, can i ask a dumb question do they then print two uniforms for every single person that's there and then just give them to them it's reversible see that would have i didn't even think that about out. that michelle these That's are the things i think about, think about. They, they, they <laughs> keep, this keeps me up at night now, i do love the idea at least in the last way the guy that was picked last had a few minutes to sort of process these this guy just goes like it's like you got picked last and now your self-esteem's hit let's get out there dude. i love it so much this is this is definitely gonna be one of my favorite parts of the weekend um we saved the bad news for last shams i know there's an update um for the grizzlies which is what <laughs> Yeah, right at the end of the Suns game the other night, Steven Adams went down uh, by the scores table, and it, it looked it looked bad. And whenever Steven Adams clutches his knee, uh, it, it's a sight that's rarely seen. So it's a PCL sprain in that knee. He's going to be sidelined at least three to five weeks, and so the hope is, is shortly after All Star break, he's going to be able to make a return. But this is the leading offensive rebounder in the NBA. Just a tough loss for a Grizzlies team that, for the most part, has avoided significant injury. Yes, Desmond May, Bain has missed time. Jaron Jackson Jr. missed time to start the year now Steven Adams is going to miss some time you know hopefully they just avoid any of those like major season ending type injuries and they can get through this yeah I hate that plus we assume it's so tough he'll he'll be fine he's going to be fine Shams I know it's Wednesday which means you won't see us for a few days so try to get through that okay we appreciate you I will I might be <laughs> back you. here soon though you never know I know we never know we never know what's gonna happen um and you guys sticking around because we got a little you buying that and didn't know if we would get here this season but we're here on the Joel Embiid possibility of stealing an MVP from his arch nemesis in awards Jokic he's got about 35 points a game he's averaging nine rebounds 11 uh wait, hold on do we think that's even possible, Chandler, that he could – it could come back down to the fact that Joel Embiid and Jokic would be the two battling this out? I mean, that would be awesome. It's, it's, I feel like centers these days are kind of extinct and everything's going small, everything's going shooting. So to see these two big guys dominate – and obviously Joel, he's more of an old school. He's, he dominates. He dunks on people. Uh, but he's so talented. He's so skilled. He has unbelievable touch for a big guy. Uh, and he hasn't really been talked about that much in the kind of the race. You hear the Tatum, you hear the KD, Luka, Giannis, and, and Jokic seems to be running away with it. But I don't think there's any chance that, that Joel does this unless, again, you know, barring an injury or, you know, an absolute skid from the Nuggets. Uh, I think it's Jokic's award to lose. But, man, those numbers right there, 35, 10, uh, I mean – 
those are unbelievable numbers. And he's having a great year with all the injuries they've dealt with, with losing Tyrese Maxey. Um, it's, it's been him all year long for this team. And he's a huge reason why they sit at the you know, number two right now in the East. Yeah, I think it is these two guys. Jokic was sensational last night, as expected. Hopefully, Joel is not great or actually sits out tonight against the Nets. But uh, <laughs> I think it is these two guys. And we've had a great run of wings this year as well, like, like, like Chandler mentioned. But they've been sensational. And I like that they seem to kind of not be best friends. I like that they get at it after each other when they play. And, you know, look, you really can't go wrong here. Um, but... You know, I, I personally would like to see Joel make a run. I think he's had a great season. I think he should have been MVP last year. And, uh, you know, just the three in a row, it just gnaws at me. I'm sorry. I know it's not <laughs> supposed to. I know it's, it's fair. I know it's a regular season award. I know it's, you know, the whole thing. It just gnaws at me. I want to see Joel get coordinated in that way. It's funny, the Joel thing, we don't mention him with the great scorers in the league. He's, I think he's second in the league right now in scoring. We don't mention him as this Jeez. incredible three-level uh, three way, three level scorer either. He's shooting 35% from three on three threes a game, which doesn't sound like a lot in today's league, but the type of threes he takes and at that size and against the guys who are defending him, it's pretty ridiculous. So, uh I, I hope it's him. I think he's played well enough to be that. But, you know, time will tell. Jokic continues to dominate in his own way as well. He really does. I know he's averaging 35 a game this month. That is kind of crazy. Um, moving on to Josh Giddy in Oklahoma City because, don't look now, 7-3 and three in their last 10. And Himothy Chalamet is a big part of that. He's averaging 18, 8 rebounds, <laughs> 7 assists. So I ask you, let's just fast forward, right? Look into the future five years from now, Eddie. Will the Thunder have a top three backcourt. Yeah, I mean, they might have Shea Gilgis Alexander and Scoot Henderson, so there's a good chance. I, I bet on them being a top three team in five years from now just because right. of what they built and how they've slowly trudged along. And, and Josh Giddy will be a huge part of that future. A um, couple eye rolls when they picked him. I think he was seventh overall in the draft a few years back and a lot of concern about whether or not he could shoot or would learn how to shoot. He, he, he's fine. He's figuring it out. He's figuring out his own way to play. I love that he plays at his own pace. I love that he's an offensive hub for them. He's helped Shea Gilders Alexander as much as anybody on that team and it continues to develop and, and he's only going to get better. He's young, you know, and so, so young. Um, yeah, I, I buy that. There's a because their backcourt could be so many different people. The way basketball is right now, their backcourt in three years could be Shea and uh, Chet. So yeah, I, I buy it, but I do buy him as a part of the future and a, and a key cog in that machine going forward. Yeah, uh, I'm with Eddie. I, I love Josh Giddy. We all know SGA is a star. He's, he's going to be in the All Star game this year. But Josh Giddy is this kind of vintage, old school, tall, great passing, high IQ point guard. And he can kind of do it all. And I think his size and his length um, at that position really helps him. And who knows in three, five years with trades, if, if you know, someone decides to go pair up with John Morant, no, I don't think they're going to be better than them. And I don't think they're better than Garland and Donovan Mitchell right now. But the future that they have and the talent and the IQ and the way they play and the way, you know, coach Mark, I'm not even going to try and say his last name has them playing. Yeah. I'm buying it. And I'm with Eddie. I'm buying them, them as a contender in the next three to five years, not only having the best backcourt. Coach Mark, that's going to be his name. It's like we're children. <laughs> we're kidding, we can't say Mark D. Coach D. Uh, Jaron Jackson <laughs> Jr. has had a nice little run here in his last 10 games, averaging just under 17, seven and a half rebounds, three and a half blocks a game. Um, defensive player of the year. That's where he is in the discussion right now. Are you buying him as a lock, Chandler? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's talk with OG, maybe kind of, you know, the numbers of guys trying to score with him defending him um there's other guys but the, yeah I, I like jaron jackson the length he kind of does it all he gets steals he gets blocks kind of protects the paint and this would be a big kind of you know stretch for him with steven adams out they're gonna have to go small and they're gonna have jaron jackson a lot of times playing at the five um and guarding bigger guys so we'll see if the physicality if he can hold up but i was with him when they drafted him in memphis and he he always has had great instincts he always kind of pursues the ball uh he's extremely long and just a very very smart player defensively and it's showing this year and and, and he's put himself as, the, as definitely the favorite to win this award 
Yeah, I, I buy him as the favorite. I want to give some love to Nick Claxton. Not being a homer, he leads the league in blocks. He leads the league <laughs> in a bunch of advanced statistics on defense as well. He's guarding one through five. He's helped steady that, that defense to, I, I think, a top ten defensive rating. But I get the Jaron Jackson conversation as well. They have the best defensive rating in the, in the league. When he qualifies, he will be the league leader in blocks. He, he, he obviously started the season injured. Um, he's been incredible, and, and, and he's on that Rudy Gobert team as well, or like the GMs understand the difference he makes in the paint and the difference he makes <laughs> as he shows on pick and rolls and, and, and mucks up other teams' offenses off ball. Um, but I, I think Nick Claxton is in the lead at the moment. I think they'll both make all defensive uh, the all-defensive team. Uh, but it's going to be a great race going down the stretch. And, and if Jaron stays healthy, he's going to be right there with, with, the, with the leaders. This next question is tough, Eddie, and it's going to you first. Uh, LeBron leads the league right now in fast break points at about 6.3. So are you buying that LeBron would beat Chandler in a 40-yard dash right now? Hey, how did I miss that one on the uh, preview? <laughs> 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 I, 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 Chandler, when's the last time you ran? Like, we're we talking Great like question. two years, three years. Like, uh, you know, LeBron, the, LeBron leading the league is in the stat is hilarious because I, I smell a little bit of cherry picking going on. But uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna give my guy Chandler a shot. I'm gonna give him a shot. I, I think he's got it. I, I could see him, you know, putting the Jets on. Wait, Love you think Chandler? Am I wrong to trust you? Eddie. Yes, hey, you are that. wrong. Yeah. What? What are you talking about? He golfs all day. <laughs> He's not listen, running. Listen, I'm 34 <laughs> years old and I need double knee replacement. LeBron will beat half the NBA currently in, in a 40 yard <laughs> dash. <laughs> I have 0% chance, Eddie, but I love you for getting my back. That's a good friend, Chandler. That is like Rick, really, that's nice, that's Eddie, but you really knew. Either. That was, that was a bad I'm, ride, I'm riding with the gang. I'm riding with the gang. <laughs> All right, I'll remember that. Uh, we're taking a quick break here. When we come back, feed my soul some of the best fits from the week behind us when Run It Back returns. People don't realize, bro. I went through so much there. Like, I was there six years. You feel what I'm saying? Like, It don't seem like he was there that long either. First year go by, you know, thrown in the fire in the playoffs versus the Rockets. Then my second year, they see I come back. Obviously getting stronger, getting better. And then that was the year I took the job from Tony. Pop about us in the office. You know what I mean? He told Tony, Tony ain't like it. I know he ain't like it. You know he ain't like it. You know what I'm saying? That's like for boy. me, I love real. Like keep it a buck with me. Yeah. Like keep it a hundred, bro. I'm a I'ma love you for that. You know what I mean? And I know he didn't like it. You feel me? Because if he liked it, he would have mentored me the way he should have. Mm -hmm. Right. He wouldn't have went to Charlotte. He would have stayed right there. Well, first, okay. First of all, who likes being replaced by the younger version themselves? Like that's an asinine statement to make. Obviously, he didn't like it. I don't know that his his motivation for going to Charlotte was so he didn't have to mentor Dejounte Murray. This interview was just irritating on a lot of levels because I think Dejounte Murray was in the best situation for Dejounte Murray at the beginning of his career. He was an all-star after all, and a team did take him where a lot of other teams were like, thanks, but no thanks. So you're welcome for that. Uh, and I just want to shout out Steven Jackson on the all San Antonio women are fat. I've actually been losing weight. Thank you very much for noticing. And I'm very insulted that you haven't paid more attention to that. But all of that being said, like, I know that they want to kind of pile on Tony Parker. I'm not going to pretend to be in that locker room. I, you know, Professional athletes have egos. They don't want to be replaced. So as far as DeJounte Murray and the Tony Parker situation, Chandler, like what did you make of that interview and the way he kind of spoke on it? Yeah, there's it just, I, I take that there's clearly was some sort of beef there. There was, uh, there was clearly some sort of, you know, distant, you know, relationship there. And, you know, whether Tony Parker, who's a bona fide stud, Hall of Famer, left because this young guy took his job, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm buying that, but you know, who knows? Like we said, we're not in that locker room. I'm not sure. I, I've played with older guys that were definitely salty that, you know, I was playing over them or I was getting the ball at the end of the game or I was making more money than them. Uh, and some of these older guys didn't know how to let go. I don't know Tony Parker that well. I can't imagine what the career, you know, he's had, I can't picture him being like that, but clearly DeJounte has his own, you know, relationship and beef with him. And there was something there but uh, yeah, this this was interesting because I've never heard that, and and I've never heard anything like that. But yeah, I mean, De Dejounte Murray had a great thing going in San Antonio, and I feel like the expectations were super high for him in Atlanta. 
Um, and he's having a good year, uh, but I just don't think the team is winning at the clip. And I didn't think they were going to kind of take that jump by adding him. Um, they're just kind of just there and not a real contender in the East. But uh, th- this was interesting just because I guess we don't personally know the, the extent and the details of this, mm-hmm. but I can't imagine Tony Parker left to Charlotte because Jante Murray I was can't. stuck. I can't. No. That just doesn't seem like a good enough reason. Um, by the way, we have breaking news right now. Shams, God, you teased us. You said you might be back, and here you are. What is going on? Listen, Michelle, that's what I do. Um, <laughs> so this just in, Milwaukee Bucks forward center Bobby Portis has suffered an MCL sprain in his right knee. The injury happened the other night. Uh, he's going to miss some time, I'm told. And so it, it, it's a tough loss for the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, Chandler, you know, I'm sure you've hmm. de- seen, dealt with – MCL sprains. Uh, what's what's your guys' immediate reaction to Bobby Portis suffering an MCL sprain in this juncture of the season? Yeah, that's tough, and especially the year he's having. You know, he's a double double machine. He's the, their heart and soul. He's the tough guy on the team. He's knocking down shots. This is a huge hit for the Bucks and. These sprains, again, they, they kind of can linger. If you don't take the proper you know rehab, the proper time off, this is something that could transpire into something worse. So uh, this is a tough break for them. They've already gone through a bunch of this, you know, in and out with, with Chris. And now to have Bobby Portis go is just horrible timing for them. That is. That is just a bug injury. That's not good at all. Eddie, your reaction. Yeah, I mean, it's – that's tough for them. It, it, you know, thankfully, they just got Chris Middleton and Giannis back. He, he had a big game against the Pistons uh, off the bench for them, and he's, he's a key for them. He allows them to, to play as spread out as possible in those second units that Giannis thrives in um, where Brooke Lopez isn't there to protect the paint or sit in the corner and, and draw defenses out. So he's huge for them. I mean, they're going to get him back in time for the playoffs and when they really need him. Uh, they gave him the big deal. He, he's obviously a key cog for them. Uh, so, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to lose him. But thankfully for them, it's right when Giannis and Chris Middleton come back. And I think they'll be able to survive while they wait out uh, this injury. Yeah, they are, they are not lucky in the injury department. Shams, thank you so much. See? You're good. <laughs> I All see. I do is tease, Michelle. I see, All I I do is see tease. Shams. <laughs> uh, we'll take a quick break here. and we come back, try to make you even more money. Because guess what? Well, maybe not. We'll try. <laughs> Get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets with FanDuel's Kick of Destiny. All you have to do is bet five bucks on Super Bowl 57. And if Gronk kicks a field goal live during the game, you'll get a piece of $10 million in bonus bets. That photograph's amazing. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account. (laughs) Gronk kick, you win. It's as simple as that. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. What is going? It's like Lara Croft with the Gronk version. I have no idea. (laughs) What's happening there? All right, guys. Yesterday was kind of a tricky one. I will start by saying Chandler lost his leg. That's most important. Mine was a push, so it's almost like I don't exist, which is kind of cool. And Eddie, we bow down. You were right. Look at that. The the, the superior gambler once again. <laughs> I'm I'm excited that I won. Killing it, <laughs> Thanks, killing guys. it. Oh, wait, by the way, we lost the whole thing by like two points, so it's it's about as close as you can get. So I'm not even gonna be too mad about it. But we have another chance today yeah, to Pelicans go into the weekend. Lost by the Pelicans lost by one, and I was like, "Does that mean we won?" But I, I have the—I cannot believe the Magic are, getting, are favored against anybody, and, and let alone by this many points. So I'm just taking the Pacers and the points because they're just so much better mm. than the Magic. Uh, but yeah, which probably means they, you know, the Magic win by seven. So at least, whatever. at least it means that Chandler. <laughs> Come on now. The maps, the maps couldn't even get a shot off last night to, <laughs> to help me out there. Um, and I will say, when I saw this, it was Lakers, I think, minus five. But I still, the Spurs, sorry, Michelle, are a bad team. Lakers, I think AD's back. Is, uh, and, and LeBron, hopefully he's playing after a back Hopefully not. Hopefully I like not. Lakers. I like the Lakers here to, to bounce <laughs> back after a beatdown last night. Here's what I'd like to bet on, that the Spurs will make it a game for three and a half quarters, but I haven't seen that on the board yet. And uh, when it gets there, let me know. I've taken Rockets plus three against the Wizards. Wizards on a back-to-back. And like I say every single time, I don't have to have science. I have feels. And this is what I feel for tonight's parlay. So let's see what you get for 20 bucks. All right. All right. Win 120. Go into the weekend. Buy a couple drinks. Whatever. I don't know where you live. Maybe that buys you two drinks. Maybe that buys you 10. Nobody knows. Guys, this is it. 
We're not going to see each other for two days. Any parting words? Hmm. Um, yeah. Go Nets. <laughs> go Nets? Chandler, oh, we Chandler, get those game. bookshelves, my friend. Uh, Cincinnati. Market. <laughs> it's going to do it for us. We'll be back on Monday. Enjoy the weekend. Be safe.